Silent, deadly, often beautiful, Africa has a wealth of snakes. Snakes are a symbol of evil and of wisdom, health and life, a source of revulsion and fascination. Of the world's two and a half thousand species of snake, 143 live in southern Africa. So very different on the outside, yet so similar. Every snake has a forked tongue, highly distinctive, and a key sensory organ used for smelling. They can just flick them in and out through a small notch when their mouths are shut. Their tongues can even pick up scent molecules on water. All snakes eat live meat. This tiger snake has just shed its skin, a lengthy business which has made it hungry. A skink has picked the wrong place to bask. Swallowing prey may take some time. The snake's mouth is completely blocked when it's doing that. To stop it suffocating, it breathes through a special tube, the glottis, on the floor of its mouth. A snake's modified eyelid, the brill, gives it a glassy-eyed look. Slit pupils act like an old-fashioned pinhole camera, and the lens in the eye can zoom in and out like a camera lens. Some snakes, like those that burrow, have tiny eyes. Big eyes are rather pointless underground. A boomslung hunts by day, and its eyes are large, with big teardrop-shaped pupils. An armor of scales protects a snake's body from abrasive surfaces, bark or the ground. A puff adders are ridged and rough, its head scales large. A green mambas are small, smooth and flat, contrary to what most people think snakes are dry, often silky feeling, strange because scales are made of keratin like fingernails. From a tight coil one moment to a long piece of rope the next, snakes can startle when they unwind, and markings like leaf litter or earth hide them from enemies or victims. Many snakes are superbly camouflaged and move with liquid grace. Snakes are redesigned lizards with several big differences. The upgraded snake model has a long, slender, legless body and it strangles or kills prey with poison, which lizards don't. Lizards have eyelids that move, snakes don't. Though monitor lizards are closer to snakes than they are to some other lizards, they still have external ears, legs and claws not snakes. If you've perfected slinking along belly to the ground, you certainly don't need legs. Snakes come in all sizes, 15 centimeter matchstick thin, or chunky as a human torso and long as a station wagon. Being little means you're nippy. If you're big, you're slower, but more scary to predators. The African rock python is the continent's goliath. It can be over five meters long. Big or small, 
Every slinky, sleek body has 400 vertebrae, double the entire bone count of a human. Most snakes are loners. Getting together with a suitable mate may take an effort, but a forked tongue is a huge help, especially if a receptive female has left a provocative scent trail behind her. However, the scent trail's there for others to find, and another Boomslung male's arrived already. Both have the same thing on their minds. Sex and a single female. The rivals weigh up the odds. No contest if they're unevenly matched. The smaller usually backs off in a hurry, but these two seem about equal, so it's into battle. They fling themselves into the ring and the wrestling begins, though it looks more like an exotic dance. Their only spectator is the female. Success in this writhing game goes to the snake who can knock his opponent to the ground. In the end, both of them go down. And there's a winner gliding back up the tree. But what if his prize doesn't want him after all that? He'd better make the right moves. This means slipping his body seductively round her, caressing her lightly with flickering tongue and trembling. Lay on the curvaceous behavior and he should succeed. In response to his caresses, she lifts her tail to expose the opening to her reproductive tract and mating starts. They'll stay locked in embrace until he's fertilized her, usually a matter of minutes, but it could be hours. Fertilization isn't always immediate because female snakes are nature's sperm banks. Some species can store sperm for several years and it'll still be viable. These are black mamba eggs. They've incubated for three months and are just starting to hatch. Like their big cousins, the crocodiles, Hatchling snakes slit an exit with an egg tooth, a small temporary growth on the tip of the snout. Each new black mamba is the spitting image of its parents and already packs a nasty punch of venom. This is Africa's most feared snake and some say it has a black temper to suit its name. New hatched mambas don't need to hunt for several weeks. They can keep going on the egg yolk absorbed before hatching.
each snake will slip away to follow its loner's destiny and face whatever fate has in store. But they're entering a strange new place. They're cautious at first. All those unfamiliar smells to be checked out with busy, flickering tongue. Not all snakes lay eggs. This gaboon adder has just given birth to live young. During a pregnancy that might have lasted a year, she didn't eat much. She also kept her body temperature as steady as possible for the good of the young growing inside her. Now they're out, and dressed in camouflage kit every bit as good as hers. Brand new, not a scratch or tear. It'll be a little while before they outgrow it and need to change. Each small gaboon adder is already deadly. Not as much as mother, one bite from her could kill ten men. From small beginnings will grow the world's largest adders, two meters long. And armed with the longest fangs of any snake alive. first snakes probably evolved between 100 and 150 million years ago. In the region that's now North Africa lived a terrestrial species called Laparentophis defreni. It may have been rather like today's primitive blind burrowing snakes, though the ancient version belonged to a unique family and left no descendants. Just who the snake's ancestors were is still a total mystery. It was thought they descended from a group of lizards that gradually became legless when they took to burrowing for a living. Monitor lizards are closely related to snakes, but they trod a slightly different evolutionary path. They still have legs and claws. However, some snakes keep a tiny reminder of the days when they did too. The python's spur is a throwback to that time. ancestors of snakes could have looked like a modern glass lizard. Perhaps the burrowers that lost their legs did better in those early days than the leggy versions, and so they survived. But recent fossil analysis has thrown up a new theory. Snakes came from the sea. They weren't descended from a terrestrial lizard at all. 87 million years ago, the dominant marine carnivores were reptiles called mosasaurs, and their fossils show at least 40 features shared with snakes. 
They were impressive sea reptiles, some 15 meters long, almost as big as a blue whale. Huge heads sat on the end of short necks, with long, slim bodies behind. So which was the ancestral snake, the mosasaur or the burrowing legless lizard? It needs a find of even older fossils to answer that one. A chameleon is a lizard that lives above ground level, in the branches and leaves. Its incredibly long tongue rockets out to snare its prey. It has a distant relative that also lives in the trees, another predator, but one that likes to eat chameleon, its favorite meal. A chameleon can only move slowly, and neither evasion nor expert camouflage is going to help now that a boomslung's here. The boomslung bites deep into the chameleon. It has large fangs that lie at the back of its mouth. Its venom penetrates quickly. It won't be long before the venom takes effect. Very soon, the boomslung will swallow the chameleon whole. Snakes have to swallow their food whole. They have no claws to rip it up or teeth to chew it to bits. To enable them to do this, snakes have incredibly flexible skulls. Its bones are only loosely held together by very stretchy ligaments, so the head can balloon out. Prey nearly always goes down head first, to follow the way fur or scales lie. It's just that much easier to swallow. Not a yawn of tiredness, but the snake repositioning its fangs and its jaws. Not all victims die from venom, because some snakes have no fangs. They hug their prey until it suffocates, Pythons and boas are the classic constrictors. The brown house snake has no venom, so it constricts too. Snakes don't have bladders and don't urinate. 
They're one of nature's best designed water filters. Nothing liquid comes out the other end, just a semi-solid uric acid paste. A snake's food is also its water supply, but every now and then it needs a drink. In the Kalahari, multiple nest complexes crowd acacias whose thorns form a bristling defense. Twenty centimeter long entrances lined with sharp grass spikes are another. These barriers put most predators off. But a Cape Cobra can slip through the lot. All a weaver bird could hope to do is startle. Otherwise, nothing stops this long, supple enemy helping itself to nestlings. Silently, without let up, the cobra steals away the new generation of weavers. The parents can't breed again for months, not until the next rains. Just one hungry, very venomous snake can devastate a colony. Though some snake venom is no worse than a wasp sting, a puff adder's is deadly. Snake venom is dual purpose. It kills and it helps the snake digest its prey. The puff adder folds back its fangs to swallow the rat. Just one quick injection of venom was enough to kill it. Originally, snake venom evolved simply to digest. But the stronger its proteins became over time, the deadlier. All venom really is, is modified saliva. A snake's jawbones are amazing. They're in sections that can move backwards, forwards, outwards, sideways, quite independently. And all because long ago, snakes lost those legs and claws. Now, instead, their mouths manipulate their food. The digestive juices start their work in the snake's mouth. And they're so strong, everything except hair, teeth and claws will be broken down. There's not a vegetarian among snakes, though they do eat plant material when they eat plant eaters but some of their relatives like a few greens. Or a bit of scarlet to brighten up the diet. Maybe the plated lizard has an eye for color. Or maybe what it's really after is the sweet nectar in the hibiscus flowers. Now a savoury follow-up would be good, a fat scorpion or a millipede, or an egg, which is what this amazing little contortionist has its eye on. A case of overambition, eyes bigger than stomach. The egg may be way bigger than its head, but the egg eater has perhaps the stretchiest mouth in the world.
the snake's secret is folds of soft tissue tucked away between lower jaws and lips. These open out like the folds of a fan when the snake goes to work on an egg. It looks like a live balloon, but the egg is still whole. How's it going to crack this gobstopper? No problem. Jab it with an inbuilt egg breaker the pointed ends of neck vertebrae that protrude like daggers into the egg-eater's throat, and then saw it open with the spine. A few quick wriggles, and the job's done. And what about the indigestible eggshell? Again, no problem. Send it back the way it came. In the sinuous, slinky world of snakes, there are specialist movers, those that do well on water, those suited for life on land. And those that slide around branches like acrobats. But most get around fine on all three. It used to be said snakes walked on their ribs, but they don't. Hard plates called scutes on the snake's belly do the walking. Each scute is attached to two or more pairs of ribs by muscles that control its movements. The green mamba has wide scutes with trailing edges for better grip on branches. The garter snake's long stripes make it look as if it's moving quicker than it really is. The highly venomous black mamba also moves well in trees. It's Africa's longest venomous snake and can reach an impressive four meters. The black mamba holds the snake world land speed record. Over short distances, it zips along at nearly 19 kilometers an hour, fast enough to overtake someone running. And this snake could compete for the plodder's record. The rock python is one of the slowest movers of all. It can't hurry along, it's too big and heavy. The python goes in a semi-straight line by moving its belly scutes in groups. Some push back against the ground, some slide forwards at the same time. This is how most heavy snakes move. But if you're on hot Kalahari soil, you don't want to hang about. The horned adder curves in a wide S shape, so it only touches the ground with small parts of its body at once, and it'll hurry to find shade. If a monitor and a cobra had a swimming contest based on speed and style, guess who'd win? Not the doggy paddle monitor. It would be several laps behind the snake, 
which has time for a stint underwater. But it would get there in the end. The spotted bush snake is a swimming athlete too. Only a moment's hesitation before making a river crossing. Snakes look like they're moving fast, but that's because they undulate. Few can actually top nine kilometers an hour. A tiger snake winds its way just as fluidly in trees as on the ground. It goes into four-wheel drive to climb the vertical, gripping bark with small belly scales, and looking as if it's done this all its life, which it has. Snakes are such good all-terrain creatures that NASA is trying to copy them, creating robotic snakes that might one day explore other planets. Cold-blooded snakes need it warm and do best in the tropics where temperatures are steady. The ideal is around 30 centigrade. They get rather sluggish at low temperatures and can drop down dead from heat exhaustion if it's too hot. Some snakes, though, live in the desert, where, of course, survival depends on not drying out. Scales stop moisture evaporating, and you find liquid wherever you can, from a nice, juicy gecko, for instance. The juicy gecko would be lunch if it moved and caught the snake's eye. However, this particular gecko seems to think the snake is lunch. Worth a taste, at any rate. In a desert, any shade is a godsend, even a rotting carcass, which ought to be offensive to a creature with a refined sense of smell. Desert beetles can run along with bodies lifted high off burning sand. Something with no legs might as well try and fly as do that. But the legless design is good for swimming. Every snake can swim. Some like to go into the water for food. A python is in its element there. It can do lengths underwater, because like many snakes, pythons can hold their breath. Some snakes easily manage an hour underwater, and down there, mud-colored markings make a python almost invisible. In the West African rainforest, a pair of turacos are also well concealed, and so is the predator on their trail.
a West African cobra is an agile, dangerous tree climber. A maimed taraco, a dead easy catch. But a sudden noise and goodbye lunch. A rainforest is a multi storied apartment block where cobras skulk in the middle floors. Most tenants live in the fruit and flower rich canopy, the penthouse. But the gaboon adder likes the quiet gloom of the ground floor. The adder's markings match the old dead leaf pattern of the carpeting, so it can hide from the other tenants until it moves. They'd probably like it to move permanently, Here's another unwelcome neighbor, a slimline enemy that can reach delicate outer branches without breaking them and search out other residents, but not for company. This hunter just blends right in with the color scheme of its leafy residents, which just shows that a snake, a master of disguise, can make itself at home almost anywhere if it's warm enough. According to an old African tale, it's rash to let pride get in the way of good judgment. There was once a hungry snake. Its favorite meal was juicy mouse or rat, but it had eaten up all of those in its piece of the forest. All but one, that is, a brave and wily little fellow. The snake's tongue flickered hungrily over the forest floor in search of a rodent he might have missed, but the only one left was the one that had always got away. So Snake decided to try another tack. When he finally met Rat, instead of hissing aggressively, he called out in a friendly fashion, Good morning and a good day to you. This unexpected approach surprised Rat. My dear rat, said Snake, oozing charm from every paw, why do you always evade me? But rat ignored him and carried on cleaning himself. I think, said Snake, that it's pure fright that makes you run from me. But rat proudly and rashly walked right over Snake's head. You are mistaken, Snake, I'm not afraid of you. Come here and look into my eyes, said Snake, so I can see if you're telling me the truth. And in his pride and ignorance, the foolish rat did so. In a flash, Snake pounced. And all that was left of the brave but silly rat was a large bump inside Snake. Snakes are very quiet creatures on the whole, except for a few. A puff adder can hiss loudly in warning. (laughs) 
Snakes have no external ears. A single ear bone attaches to the jaw so they hear through it. They're better at picking up low-pitched sounds. An American rattlesnake is deaf to its own relatively high-pitched rattle. The mongoose is famously one of the few that deliberately goes for snakes, particularly cobras. This snouted cobra has come smartly to attention at the sight of one. Its spread hood warns the mongoose to back off. This is normally a waste of time, and the snake's warning hiss doesn't scare it either. The cobra shows the mongoose it's serious with a mock strike. Which works on this occasion, or the mongoose had other fish to fry. Apart from the usual five senses, some snakes have another way of gathering information. Sensing pits, the most finely tuned heat receptors in nature. They can pinpoint a heat source, and they come into their own at night, like infrared lenses. They help the snake track prey or evade enemies. In Africa, only the python has this sophisticated military-style hardware fitted to its lips. A rock python has front and side pits. The front ones lie in its upper lip. Anything at the snake's back or side is detected by the lateral pits just below its jawline. They're so good that even a blind snake can still hunt and mate. All snakes use their tongue to collect information. Scent molecules that land on it are passed to the Jacobson's organ in the roof of the mouth for analysis. A very advanced system, too. In the monochrome colors of a desert, it's a bad idea to advertise your presence if you want to catch something. You need to blend in and hide in ambush. The desert adder is really good at this. Going, going, gone. Just an eyeball showing. Other snakes advertise their presence with bright disco colors that say, don't touch. A coral snake flags its venomous nature very vividly. The bark-colored vine snake doesn't advertise. The tip of its tongue is a discreet black, but if it sticks it out too far, an orange section appears, which can confuse and lure the lizards it likes to eat. Snakes use body language, just like other animals. Posture can intimidate. The vine snake puffs out its throat to look bigger, a common snake tactic. For a silent animal, the snake still has much to say in its own fashion. When cornered, a snake's fangs, its weapons of attack, can become defensive weapons. When there's danger, a cobra rolls on its back and pretends to be dead. Its mouth gapes. Danger passed, and it rises from the dead. A baby crocodile cruising its nursery area, constantly calling mother. A somewhat similar shape but this isn't her, it's a rock python, enjoying a nice cool soak on a hot day.
One is just about tolerable, but two is too much. Maybe they'll leave her in peace here. But no, they must think she's one of them, or their mum. Well, that one finally caught on. Mother's tongue doesn't flick like that. Blind faith or ignorance? Luckily for a trusting small creature, its distant relative doesn't usually eat crocodiles. But this reptile does eat its relatives, even ones with venomous fangs. The cobra has seen its big and bulky monitor lizard cousin and knows it's not come for a friendly visit. The snake's already up in arms about it. The monitor straightens its legs, looking taller and tougher as it weighs up the risks. Lizard is bigger than cobra, but this cobra shows no signs of backing down or running off. A lunge from the snake gets a tail swipe from the monitor in reply. That's its chief line of defense. Stalemate between two well-matched reptiles. This is a dish not worth touching. But many snakes are not that lucky. A young tiger snake's voyage of discovery has brought it to hostile land. No use a small snake trying to intimidate a goliath, a giant plated lizard. It makes a brave but futile strike. The lizard is only too happy to help itself to a free meal. Even if it's a rather meager snack for two. Snakes will probably never conquer a generally negative image. They'll always be loathsome and nasty to many. An unfortunate view of an animal that's rarely a threat to man. Many are quite harmless and all usually avoid people. Much the best option for one of nature's most graceful, highly advanced creatures.